don't be fooled by this deserted landscape. Beneath this alien desert is a spirit unbroken by adversity. This ordinary scientist named Mark is a stranded astronaut, but pay attention, he chooses to get rid of half of his food intentionally so that he can do experiments. He doesn't care about surviving for just the next few months, he works tirelessly to find a way to grow potatoes, so that he also has water and oxygen. As soon as they sprout, the ordinary scientist would write it down in a notebook. What he really wants are the basic things to stay alive for the next four years. This is when the next space mission is set to land, and it can bring him home. This is Mars in 2035, a place where every moment of survival is a testament to human tenacity. NASA tells him sadly that his survival is impossible, but Mark's eyes show determination against all odds. A few days earlier, Mark and his crew land on Mars and start doing research. They have a special home called the HAB to live in and a rover to drive around. One day, a huge storm hits Mars. Mark and his crew have to leave quickly because it's too dangerous. But something bad happens. During the storm, Mark gets hit by a broken piece of equipment. His body flies away and his friends can't find him. They think he's dead. With heavy hearts, they get on the shuttle and take off to return to Earth. But Mark wakes up after the storm. He's hurt, but he's alive. Mark makes it back to the HAB, he needs to think fast about how to survive. He takes his suit off and removes the antenna from his abdomen. Then he stitches the wound. In a video log he says that he can't contact NASA, even if he could, it would take four years for another manned mission to reach him. The HAB is designed to last only 31 days. However, Mark is determined to survive. He checks the HAB and finds some food, but not enough for four years. But then he is struck by an idea while going to the bathroom. He gets some of the vacuum-sealed potatoes from storage and begins to spread Martian soil across the floor. He then mixes it with waste from the toilet to fertilize the soil, and plants a potato. It's the first time in human history, man has planted food on another planet. To make water he ingeniously burns excess fuel and a wooden crucifix. 54 days later, Mark sees his first potato plant has broken the surface. It is a small success, but it gives Mark the hope he needs to keep going. But food isn't his only problem. He needs to fix things that break in the hab and keep all the machines working. He also starts to think about how to let NASA know he's alive, he needs to find a way to talk to Earth. He remembers there's an old Mars rover, Pathfinder, from a past mission. It's not too far away, and it might still work to send messages. Mark plans a trip to get Pathfinder. It's risky because the rover he has to drive isn't meant for long trips, but Mark remains determined to survive. He prepares everything, packs his space suit, and sets off. Mark drives carefully, looking at the stars and the empty land around him. Finally, he finds Pathfinder, he's excited and a bit nervous. Mark takes it back to the HAB and starts working on it. After many tries, he finally gets it to turn on. He sends a simple message to Earth. And now, he waits, hoping someone will see it and answer. Back on Earth, everyone thinks Mark Watney is gone. They are devastated about losing him, people all over the world heard about the astronaut left on Mars. But then, something amazing happens. Satellite pictures of Mars show changes at the HAB site. NASA realizes someone is moving things around. Mark is alive. At NASA, they're happy that Mark is alive, but also worried. How can they help him, from so far away? They start making plans, engineers work on ideas to send him food, and figure out how to bring him back to Earth. Meanwhile, Mark finally gets a message back from NASA. His resilience and ingenuity has paid off, he's not alone anymore. He can send short messages to NASA using a combination of Pathfinder and whiteboards. He tells them about his food, the potatoes he's growing, and the status of the HAB. NASA sends him instructions and helps him with his plans. Mark feels good to talk to people again, even if it's just in messages. The rest of the Ares 3 crew, 
flying back to Earth on the spaceship Hermes, don't know Mark is alive yet. When NASA tells them, they're shocked and super happy. But they also feel crushed by the fact that they left him behind, they want to help too. He also starts to think about his ride home. The next Mars mission, Ares 4, has a rocket called the MAV already on Mars, waiting for that crew. Mark starts to make a crazy plan to travel to the MAV, and use it to meet up with his crew on the Hermes spaceship. Meanwhile, NASA sends a supply rocket to Mars, but there's a big problem. The rocket breaks apart before leaving Earth. This is a huge setback. Mark's extra food is gone. What can they do now? Then, one of NASA's smartest people comes up with a bold idea. They can use the Hermes, which is still on its way back to Earth, to turn around and go back to Mars. It's a daring plan and very risky, but the crew decides they are willing to go on this long and dangerous journey to save their friend. Mark knows his biggest challenge is still ahead. He must travel across Mars to reach the MAV from the Ares 4 mission. It's his only chance to get back to space and meet the Hermes. It will be a long and life-threatening journey, but Mark remains courageous and trusts his instincts. First, he needs to make the Mars rover ready for the long trip. He works hard to change the rover, adding more batteries and making it comfortable to live in for weeks. He packs his food, water, and everything he needs to survive. He looks out at the big red desert of Mars, standing strong before the daunting task before him. Some would call this a suicide mission, but Mark knows it's his only chance at survival. The trip across Mars is tough. Mark drives over hills, through valleys, and across wide plains of red dust. He sees amazing sights of giant canyons and tall mountains. Sometimes he talks to himself or to his rover. He names it Rover 2 and treats it like a friend. It's lonely on Mars, but Mark keeps his humor and stays strong. Back on Earth, millions of people are watching Mark's journey. They see pictures from satellites and cheer him on, they're amazed by his bravery. Mark has become a global symbol of hope, uniting people and nations to help bring him home. His crew on the Hermes is also watching, they're ready to do their part in the daring rescue plan. On his 463rd day on Mars, Mark reaches the MAV, the rocket that can take him back to space. But it's not ready for such a big trip. Mark works hard, making the MAV lighter and ready for a different kind of launch. He removes parts and makes it as simple as possible. He needs it to reach the Hermes, which is still orbiting in space. The Hermes crew has already decided to turn their spaceship around and head back to Mars. They're going to try and catch Mark as he launches in the MAV, the timing must be perfect. On Mars, Mark leaves the rover for the last time, gets ready, and climbs into the now gutted MAV. The engines start, and the MAV lifts off. Mark is going back to space. He watches Mars get smaller below him, he's finally leaving the red planet behind. In space, the Hermes crew is ready. They need to catch Mark as he flies towards them, but both Mark and the crew must do everything just right. They use the spaceship's engines, airlocks, and even their own bodies to change their course. Finally, they see Mark. He's in his space suit, flying through space. The crew grabs him, and pulls him inside. They did it, they saved their friend. Mark is safe, and they're all going home together. The world cheers and celebrates. Mark Watney, the man who survived on Mars, is coming home.